test ID 62, component ID 80. It's the EVAP leak test for a 20,000th leak. The component ID 80 indicates we have a minimum limit. Now the PCM runs the leak detection pump to build pressure in the EVAP system. The pressure K decay is then used by the PCM for leak determination. The values aren't converted into measurement values by Chrysler, so use the data as a relative indication of performance. We'll use vehicle data to show values. Remember, we'll fail any time we are below the minimum. 62 in this case reads 255 as a measured value with a minimum limit of 213. We pass the test. And remember, when you're doing routine testing, you're finished with 62. Move on to something else. When you have a failure, we're going to have to go in and look at some things. Here's the connector. We're going to find the sense switch and the solenoid, B plus and all of that. And here's a diagram. You're definitely going to need a good diagram in order to do this. Now let's see exactly how the PCM can activate the solenoid. B plus is supplied at the red lead at the top on pin 2. The PCM supplies ground at the bottom to pull the solenoid in. When the solenoid opens a vacuum switch, the solenoid opens a vacuum switch to pull the leak detection pump diaphragm up which opens the sense switch we're seeing right here. We're showing you this in the diagram because when we talk about how this works in more detail. The PCM removes the ground when the switch opens and the solenoid return spring forces the, the, the diaphragm down which puts pressure in the EVAP system. This action continues until the diaphragm pumps pressure into the EVAP system to cause the switch to stay open. The spring is not strong enough to return it. In this particular case, the spring is about six or seven inches of water. Now, you're going to see how this works because we need to take time to understand it. This is a preview of how it works. Let's go look at the details in an animation of exactly how all this takes place. We're going to use some great animation from Star Envirotech. People make great smoke machines for EVAP testing. We're going to be connected to our canister here where we'll be getting sucking fresh air in and it'll be coming from the vent up here in this diagram. Now this is normal operation. We're going to block manifold vacuum with a valve at the top. This is going to keep the vent open so normal canister purge can take place. What we're going to do when we're ready to unblock this vacuum that's been blocked is we're going to energize the solenoid. When the solenoid is energized we pull that valve back this is going to open it up and open expose that passage and it's going to pass vacuum down to the top of the diaphragm and when vacuum is applied to the top of the diaphragm several things are all going to happen at one time so pay careful attention first thing we're going to happen the diaphragm is going to be pulled up and we're going to close the vent this seals up the evap system the reed switch opens and the check valve opens to allow fresh air to come in and fill the chamber this is the first phase of getting ready for the leak check. Now just pulling the diaphragm up does not make a pump. To function as a pump, the diaphragm is going to have to work in a cycle up and down and have a spring that's calibrated to push it down. Now in this particular case, the diaphragm return spring is calibrated force of six to seven inches of water. When pressure builds in the EVAP system to six to seven inches, the diaphragm stays up. Now the PCM is going to activate it every time it see it goes down. If pressure builds too quickly, the EVAP system is restricted. That's one finding. If pressure never builds, the system has a gross leak. Once the PCM determines that the system is staying pumped up, diaphragm is staying up, it can measure the time to calculate the amount of leaks we have, major leaks, minor leaks. You need to understand a little bit of how the system works like this in order to diagnose. We're going to use a diagram from the MPC Smart Spec. Now we know we can't wait for the EVAP monitor to run to test this. So we're going to start checking things. B plus has to be supplied here when we're running and the key is on. With the engine running, activate the solenoid by applying a ground to this circuit. This is the same thing the PCM does. Engine vacuum should be applied to the diaphragm which should cause the switch to open. Now running the switch open one time is not going to do it. You're going to need B plus to the solenoid, a good ground connection, and manifold vacuum to make the switch stay activated. What we're going to have to do is cycle it off and on to get it to stay open. So this is a test we can do. 
but you can use a scan tool. However, we're not going to really actually run the solenoid. We can activate it, but it's not going to open the switch because we have no vacuum applied. We're going to go to the actuator test mode, and we're going to activate the LDP, LDP test. Here it is in still form. Let's show you what's up here. First of all, the red trace at the bottom is the LTP switch. It can be used to activate the LTP with a 50% duty cycle. But as you notice, the switch, sense switch, does not open because we have no engine manifold vacuum. Now we'll take a look at this. When it's grounded, which is what we used our jumper lead to do, we can activate the solenoid. Here's actual film moving around. This is what you're going to see on your scope to verify the solenoid is doing. We're going to use the field test. We're going to actually go under the car, put our hands on it, and see if it clicks. We call this the click test. If the solenoid is clicking when we have it activated, that's fine. The point we're trying to make here is the actuator test mode tells if the solenoid is working. It does not tell us if it pulls a vacuum. We do that manually like we showed you in the diagram. You cycle it on and off three or four times, you'll find it stays up. If the, sp if the pressure stays up, the solenoid is working and the manifold vacuum is holding it open and the system is holding pressure. You pass your manual test. Now you might want to go have a look at smoke testing because we think smoke testing is probably the most practical way to test this and we'll show you how to block it off and do a smoke test in smoke testing the LDP